Good evening and welcome. This is Prime Time News on TV One. Today is the 19th of July 2021, bringing you the news for News First Team, the voice of the people. I'm Zaimar Ratnaika. Here are your headlines for tonight. President says he has eight more years to implement his policy. No confidence motion against Gamampila tabled in Parliament. <laughs> Muslim members of parliament who voted for the 20th amendment meet president and prime minister. Protests held demanding to resolve salary anomalies of teachers and principals. A-levels and scholarship exam dates announced. On to your top story for this evening. President Gotabe Rajapaksa today said that he has not just three years but five more years after that as well to implement his policies. The president's media spokesperson posted on Twitter saying that the president made this statement during a meeting with heads of media institutions held earlier today. In more news, the motion of no confidence against Minister Uday Gamampila presented by the Samagi Janabala Vega was debated in Parliament earlier today. The no confidence motion was presented on the grounds that the lives of the people already battered by the COVID-19 pandemic was made worse by the fuel price hike. The General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna said that the decision to increase fuel prices was part of a conspiracy to bring disrepute to the government. I would like to ask the Honorable MP, was it the Minister of Energy or the Minister of Finance who increased prices of fuel when your government was in power? It was Minister Uday Gammanpilla who said that the price was increased upon the written approval of the Finance Minister. I would like to ask you, was Sagar Akariya Wasam referring to Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa as the person who is conspiring against the government? Is that the reason why he was removed from the Finance Ministry and Basil Rajapaksa brought to replace him? When the bond scam took place, a motion of no confidence was presented. We as backbench MPs of the government pressured the then Prime Minister to remove him from that ministry. Not only that, Two other ministers during our time had to resign from their ministerial portfolios. We would like to know if today you can do the same. Minister Vimal Vedavansa is asking us about the fuel pricing formula. I don't know if he even knows what V1, V2 and V3 in the formula stood for. On average last year, the price of a barrel of crude oil was at about 45 US dollars. The price of fuel was not reduced even then. 69.2 billion rupees was deposited to the fuel stabilization fund. And we don't even know what happened to that money. We don't know if they will use their two-thirds majority to defeat this in Parliament. But you have been disgraced among the public and you must understand that. I challenge you to bring Basil Rajapaksa here and allow him to make a statement on if the increase in fuel prices by Minister Uday Gammanpilla was right or wrong. <laughs> Meanwhile, the government pointed out that the motion of no confidence against Minister Udaya Gamanpila cannot be taken up as MP SM Marika began expressing his views before presenting the motion of no confidence verbally. Honorable Speaker, when a number is given for a proposal, the proposal is brought only when you call for it. Especially a motion of no confidence must be read. Take a look at the Hansard and see this. This has always been the tradition. Secondly, if nothing like that has been read, such a proposal cannot be seconded. How can you second something without a motion to begin with? <laughs> So I don't know whether he has an amendment. If you have an amendment, you must move it at the beginning, not at the end the match, match is over. Hari Hari, Kiyavandi Yojanav. Kiyavandi Yojanav. Sika Samajavadi Yandraje Andukram Ivaastave. Me Vivaade Atule Eka Mantri. Honorable Speaker, one parliamentarian cannot be allowed to speak twice during the debate. He has finished his speech. You cannot allow him to make another address. How can that be allowed? Oba Tumaga Khata Vivarai. Eka Eka Banalak Vedi Masyak. Oba Dehema Karanli. Speaker 
Sit down. You cannot be allowed to talk twice. There is no tradition like that. Honourable Speaker, we need to bring a no-confidence motion against those who do not know how to bring a motion of no-confidence. You have to admit that you have made a mistake first. No, I'm sorry. You all have made a mistake anyway. Honourable Speaker, we are ready for the debate, so let us allow it to be read. United National Party parliamentarian Ranil Vikramasinghe presented an amendment to the motion of no confidence against Minister Udaya Gamman Pillar, stating that the motion should read that the House has lost confidence in the entire cabinet of ministers. In line 37, delete the word energy and add the words energy and all other ministers in the cabinet. Also in the same line, delete the word cabinet minister and add the word cabinet ministers. Anil Vikramasinghe Mahatma Roesan Sodhani again is when Ronald Vikramasinghe was putting on his tie and coat this morning to come to Parliament and present this amendment, he should have taken a good look in the mirror and wondered, why did the people of the Colombo district lose their confidence in the leader of the United National Party? When the Colombo district has lost its confidence in the leader of this historic party, how can he shamelessly come to Parliament and speak about the confidence in us? Mr. Kariyavasam, now you can escape thanks to Ranil Vikramasinghe. Now you can say, I agree that what Udaya Gamman Pillar did was wrong. But since the amendment brought by Ranil Vikramasinghe mentions the entire government, I have to raise my hand against this. You can say a face like that. There is no one in Sajid's camp to execute political deals like that. Sajid Premadasa is not like that. <laughs> We do not have deals like that in our program. The Samagi Janabalavege has already won the first political conspiracy of Basil Rajapaksa. We will defeat this motion of no confidence with a majority of 155 votes, including one person from your party as well. Remember that well. Now Ranil Vikramasinghe has come to parliament. Groups will now meet Ranil Vikramasinghe under the shade of night and say, You were right, sir. You were the person who should have come. If we table this against the entire government, then everyone would stand together to save the government. Therefore, we thought bringing this no confidence motion targeting the minister in charge of the subject. This has created rifts and divisions among them. We see that this minister has developed a sense of fear as well. There is also a question as to whether MPs who spoke against the minister have the ability to maintain their dignity and vote for him. Ranil Vikramasinghe of the UNP did not sign the no-confidence motion, which was signed by the members of the Samagi Jana Balavega for a specific motive. But he has brought forward amendments to this. A person who did not sign the no-confidence motion that was tabled by certain parliamentarians for a certain motive is making this favourable for the government. If we allow these amendments to be made, what will the parliamentarians representing the SLPP say? They will say that they could have made a decision if it was only brought against Udega Mampila and that they would have to stand for the protection of the government. Therefore, we have informed the Speaker that we will not allow a person who has not signed the no-confidence motion to put forth amendments in the interest of the government or anyone else in order to change the specific objectives we have in place. <laughs> These were the views expressed on the no confidence motion against Minister Udaya Gammampilla. If the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramune MPs in the chamber have some shame, they should vote for the no confidence motion. Otherwise, they can vote against this. Udaya Gammampilla is the leader of the Pivituru Hello Rumea, but what he has done now is shameful. The refinery was owned only by the CPC. He had put forward a cabinet proposal to distribute shares among foreign and multinational companies. They were silent when the Hambant report was sold off. 
They also signed the agreement with Sinopec and remain silent about it. Now they are acting like toddlers. Tell him, tell him to present the facts. If an allegation is being brought against a member of this house, a separate motion must be tabled. They can't do that by simply taking the floor. I didn't refer to anyone. Once there was a minister in Hantana. His hair is black. He served as the Minister of Highways. I am younger than the president. I don't want to conceal my age by using hair dye. When tax revenue amounts to 1,216 billion and when they spend 1,051 billion on the payment of salaries to state employees, how much will remain? There is a shortage of 815 billion to settle debt and interest. The interest on government debt can be paid only if there is a fourfold increase in VAT. We can make these payments, but we have to obtain money from someone. From whom can we obtain the money? This money can be obtained by imposing taxes on the public and not by bringing funds from Madamulan or pumping money to the treasury. If we need to change the situation, we must obtain loans. Otherwise, we have to sell off the assets. This is the situation in a household as well. They laughed at this earlier. Will they laugh at this today as well? They laughed at this fuel price formula. According to the fuel price formula, the prices of fuel could have been reduced to 77 rupees. But what did the minister say? He said that a stabilization fund would be created. They didn't pass on the benefit to the consumer. Did the minister take the excess funds to his house? It was a decision taken for the benefit of the country, for economic stability and for the foreign currency reserves by holding discussions with the president and the prime minister. The Samangijana Balavege staged a protest near the parliamentary roundabout. The protest was centered around the no-confidence motion against Minister Uday Gamampila and the opposition towards the government for the rising cost of living. Leaders of political parties belonging to the Samangijana Balavege were among those present at the protest that was led by the opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. <laughs> The protesters marched from the parliamentary roundabout to the entrance gate and staged the demonstration along the main road. There are 225 members in parliament. By tomorrow, we can identify the patriots and the traitors. People are finding it difficult to live because the prices of fuel have been increased. Fertilizer has not been given to farmers. Fishermen have been affected due to the Express Pearl Maritime disaster. The academic sector has been affected as online education isn't taking place properly. The lives of the people are at risk due to the absence of a proper vaccination program or a health care plan. The government has left the entire country reeling without offering economic packages to the people. We are trying to unseat the government with the power of the people. The entire country can now watch as to who among the 225 MPs oppose the hike in fuel prices and support a reduction in those rates. <laughs> For 16 months, the minister had not settled foreign currency repayments to the People's Bank and the Bank of Ceylon. As a result, the entire banking sectors, including the People's Bank, the Bank of Ceylon, are facing a shortage of foreign currency and are heading into bankruptcy. This minister must bear the entire responsibility. We have also held similar positions. We settled our bills by purchasing dollars, but he hasn't settled a single bill since coming into office. The people are forced to face the brunt of this failure. This government has failed completely. People don't have food. Farmers don't have fertilizer. People have lost their jobs. All sectors have been affected. This country is heading towards a famine. International reports suggest that the country will experience a famine by the end of this year. We will be bankrupt. Therefore, this government has nothing to do. They will have to go home. The protesters dispersed after the demonstration near the entrance of the parliament. What is the stance of the General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, MP Sagar Akari Avasam, 
who was highly critical of Minister Udaya Gamman Pillar when fuel prices were increased. As a party, we informed the public about the stance of our party and the stance of our party members. Although we asked him to resign, we will not allow him to be removed by that opposition. That is the decision of our party. If he himself is resigning, that is a separate matter, but we will not support the opposition to forcibly remove him from his position. That is the decision of our party. We met and decided yesterday not to support this as a party. We did not perform any sort of play. That is the stance of our party. Our party has the highest number of members in the country. We listen to the views of our party members. We simply express the true views of our party members at that time. Parliamentarian Chandimavira Kodi, representing the Sri Lanka Freedom Party aligned with the ruling faction, was absent at the meeting which was held between the president and the parliamentary group of the ruling faction. The meeting was held yesterday. Does he bear a different stance? Serving my constituency seemed more beneficial than attending discussions in Colombo. Let us see. It cannot be done in a hurry. It is the responsibility of those in the ruling faction to consider whether there truly is confidence and then vote for it. Meanwhile, the group of Muslim parliamentarians who supported the 20th Amendment to the Constitution had attended the meeting chaired by the President yesterday. Sri Lanka Muslim Congress MP Nasir Ahmad was seen with Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa after the meeting. When we inquired on the matter from Muslim National Alliance MP Ali Sabri Rahim, he said that the meeting, a decision was reached to vote against the no-confidence motion. Another meeting between parliamentarians representing Muslim political parties was held today with Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Parliamentarians H.M.M. Haris, Nasir Ahmad, Marjan Fahil, Ishak Rahuman, Ali Sabri Rahim, ALM Ataullah and SM Musharraf had attended the meeting according to MP Haris. Besides MP Ataullah and Rahim, all other Muslim MPs who attended the meeting are members of the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress read by Rauf Hakim and the All Ceylon People's Congress under the leadership of Rishad Badurdeen. Shifting your attention from the political sphere of the country to various protests that are currently being held island-wide. Protests were held in several major cities island-wide today, citing several demands, including addressing salary anomalies of teachers and principals. The protest was held opposite the Ministry of Education in Batra Mulla by the National Coalition Against Teacher Salary Anomalies. The protesters also attempted to enter the Ministry of Education to no avail. Later, several trade union representatives were allowed to enter the ministry premises and hold discussions with officials. They did not agree to meet our demands. They say that they will present to us what they can offer, but it is this very same carrot that the government will dangle before us. We have not come here to listen to your solutions. We came to get our salaries that we have unreasonably lost. We declare on this occasion that we will continue our trade union struggle until we emerge victorious. Island-wide protests were held today urging authorities to resolve salary anomalies of academics including teachers and principals. Teachers and principal trade unions converged opposite the Torrington Square in Kandy and marched towards the central market. We oppose the inability of successive governments to resolve salary anomalies of teachers and principals, which has been existing for 24 years. We also oppose the KDU bill, 
We urge authorities to provide solutions to these issues. According to our correspondent, a group had applied paint in the area where the protest was due to be held. The Organization of Teachers and Principals Trade Unions held a protest march and a demonstration at the Kegol town today. The government wants us to resolve complications pertaining to education in order for them to resolve salary anomalies. Despite this, the KDU bill has also been brought forward to sell off education and to create a military control overriding the University Grants Commission. If this is not revoked, masses will take to the streets. Another protest organized by teachers and principal trade unions was held in Ampara. The protesters marched from the Ampara clock tower towards the city center. Another demonstration urging authorities to resolve salary anomalies of teachers was held in Dehiyattakandia today. They claimed one teacher would be enough to carry out online education. We would like to see them try. Some ministers are suggesting bringing in retired teachers. We will issue a challenge. Show us how you could do it. We gathered here today to challenge the government. Let's consider salary scales of teachers. A grade 1 teacher is paid Rs 1,493 per day. For 20 years, ministers of successive governments have considered the remuneration teachers receive is low, but the issue has not been resolved. Teachers commenced online classes voluntarily and spent their own money. What is the government doing? They are assessing online teaching. No payment has been made for the one year and four months. The teachers are engaging in this task at their own expense. The dates of the advanced level and grade 5 scholarship exams were announced today. This year's advanced level exam will be held from the 15th of November to the 10th of December. The grade 5 scholarship will be held on the 14th of November. November how can they conduct the advanced level exam when the syllabus has not been covered? It is regrettable to note that they have been unable to conduct practical tests for at least one subject. Students who are expected to attempt the exam for the first time have only faced one term exam. We are calling on government officials to avoid taking irresponsible decisions and toying with the lives of children. Provide sufficient time to cover the syllabus. Don't conduct the exam on the 4th of October. Postpone the exams. Several other protests were held across the country highlighting a plethora of issues. An individual engaged in silent protest opposite the Kaduale Expressway entrance earlier today. The protesters cited strategic efforts to violate the fundamental rights of the people as the reason behind the protest. Protests have continued across the island with regard to the unresolved fertilizer issue. This was the protest held at Katanvila Junction in Akuresa today. We know the people of our country are suffering now. We are sorry about this. This is because of the destruction that has befallen this country today. Today the people of our country have no way to pull through. They have no way to live their lives, no way to eat. Everyone has become very helpless. However, the government is carrying out carnivals to hoodwink the people of this country. This is really the case of the government having done the best thing in the worst way. Sri Lanka is yet to start the production of organic fertilizer scientifically within the country. We still manufacture organic fertilizer using the feces of animals like chickens. This isn't a scientific method. Before manufacturing organic fertilizer, the importation of chemical fertilizer was stopped. This fertilizer matter was also an election promise. Even in the case of chemical fertilizer, they do not bring the best in the world. They bring the dust. The reason behind these is that that they made these tea plantations also a part of their election promises. The farmer, the tea small holder, never asked for free fertilizer. They wanted good quality fertilizer. What they brought down was the dust. On to some concerning news from neighboring India. An Indian Navy submarine has docked at India's city of Tutukudi, some 250 kilometers away from Sri Lanka. Indian media reported that the submarine's arrival is seen as a countermeasure for China's presence in the Indian Ocean.
The INS Sindhu Shastra submarine had docked at India's Tutukudi port due to a technical glitch and also for refueling and obtaining basic necessities. The submarine is expected to remain at the port for another week. India's High Commission in Colombo said it would not comment on operational matters, including those concerning the Indian Navy. The High Commission said decisions including the deployment of submarines are made by Indian authorities, considering several factors. This includes operational requirements and the protection of India and her interests. Some reports suggest that the submarine may have arrived ahead of a military exercise with other Indian vessels and a British naval force. According to these reports, the military exercise comes as India strengthens its naval force to counter China's growing influence, including in Sri Lanka. Indian media reported that China has taken steps to increase its naval capabilities with Sri Lanka, while Chinese companies have leased ports in the country. The reports add that tensions in India's northern part of Ladakh haven't subsided as China continues to cross the border region. Meanwhile, the Indian Air Force has also made preparations for fighter jets to land on India's national highways. The East Coast Road is being constructed from Nagapattinam to Kanyakumari to facilitate the supply of military equipment and the landing of military aircraft. Last Friday, the Indian Air Force landed two fighter helicopters on a runway in the western city of Jalore. This is done as an initial trial. Allowing such landings during war and emergency situations is expected to support the Indian Air Force in some operations. As India strengthens its military security, a controversy has arisen over an illegal sea cucumber farm run by a Chinese company in Kilinochi. N.J. Bose, a leader of a fisheries union in India's Tamil Nadu, said India must be allowed to fish in Sri Lankan waters if China has been given that opportunity. <laughs> About 10 years ago, we said that there are Chinese on the coast. Do you remember this? But the government didn't take that seriously. Today, they have succumbed to China. Sri Lanka has fallen into the hands of China. We thought that the Setu Samudram Canal project would bring them under control, but that wasn't implemented. They gave it to China for 99 years. When we are giving it to them, they are calling us blood relatives. When Tamils in Sri Lanka are being attacked, we feel the pain. What would happen if they grant approval for us to fish in their waters? Colombo Additional Magistrate Lochani Abevikrama issued a stern warning to a Chinese youth and four Sri Lankan youths arrested by the foreshore police for trespassing into the Colombo port premises. The suspects have been released on 10 sureties of rupees 200,000 each. The suspects were arrested on charges of entering the port premises illegally while impersonating another individual and aiding and abetting in the same. The foreign suspect is a Chinese national working on a special project in Colombo. Although legal action was taken in such a manner against a Chinese national who attempted to enter the Colombo port illegally, no action has been taken against the Chinese nationals involved in the project to dredge the Tissamha Rama Vever. The people saw how the Antiquities Ordinance, the laws on military uniforms and Tobacco and Alcohol Act were violated by the group engaged in the dredging of the Tissamha Rama Vever. Against the backdrop where the law has clearly been violated here, was action not taken against those involved due to the involvement of a person in a place of power? Concessionary loans are one or some of the best forms of relief for families, especially who earn daily wages. However, many families in Sri Lanka are yet to receive any sort of relief after being severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. This bus is a familiar sight for locals in Piliandala. For decades, this bus has provided transport services for school students in the locality. But schools have been closed down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This has prompted desperate people to obtain bank loans as they try to make ends meet. Bus owner Sajid Gayan is one among many who are seeking alternative jobs. His bus, which was once used to transport students, is now a mobile vehicle selling big onions. School service no There are about forty thousand people involved in providing transport to school students. About one hundred and forty to one hundred and fifty thousand people depend on this industry. There are some new buses where they have removed the seats and are now transporting bananas. Finance institutions are asking us to pay the premium, but how can we pay it? How can we pay them if we have no income? Sajit is not just an ordinary bus owner. He is part of an industry with similar people. 
many who depend on this industry to feed their families are now in dire straits. Delays in offering some form of relief to people like Sajid will only speed up unemployment rates in the country. President's Council Sanjeeva Jayavadana has been appointed to the Monetary Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. President's Council Sanjeeva Jayavadana will serve as a member of the Central Bank's Monetary Board until June 2027. He currently serves as the chairman of the Monetary Board level, External Debt Monitoring Committee and the chairman of the Board Risk Oversight Committee. He also chairs the Ethics Committee of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Moving on in more news, Moody's Investor Service has placed Sri Lanka under review to further downgrade its rating. Sri Lanka's ranking stands as CAA1 in the Moody's Index. The CAA1 ranking is given to countries with a poor standing and are subject to a very high credit risk. Moody's said this ranking has been placed under review as Sri Lanka's fragile external liquidity position raises the risk of default. It added that the assessment reflects weaknesses in the ability to take measures that decisively mitigate significant and urgent risks to the balance of payments. Moody's has predicted Sri Lanka's foreign reserves to continue to decline, thereby eroding its ability to meet debt servicing needs. Shifting our attention to news from overseas, an investigation has revealed that more than 50 governments have used a hacking software to target rights activists, journalists and lawyers. An Israeli surveillance firm had sold the software named Pegasus to these countries. Foreign media reports that more than 1,000 people from over 50 countries have been targeted by governments using Israel's Pegasus phone malware. These countries include India, Morocco, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, which had purchased the software from Israel's NSO group. Journalists, politicians, activists and lawyers are among those targeted. Reports suggest that people close to Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, who was murdered while visiting the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, were also targeted. Pegasus is a malware that infects mobile phones and allows hackers to extract messages, photos and emails, record calls and secretly activate microphones. Israel's NSO group that sells the software to countries has denied any wrongdoing. Their list of clients remains unknown. NSO said, quote unquote, we firmly deny the false allegations made in their report. In fact, these allegations are so outrageous and far from reality. Foreign media reported that these accusations have raised concerns among privacy activists that no smartphone user is safe from governments. The Israeli firm has maintained that its software has helped government agencies to prevent and investigate terrorism and crime. And with that, it's a wrap of Primetime News on TV1. For the News First team, I've been Jaima Ratnaik along with our sign language interpreter for tonight, Brian Cruz. Take care, stay safe and have yourself a good night.